A building has sat on this site since 1710, owned by the Russell family and was a substantial two-storied house. The house was sold in 1905 to Samuel Smith, a Nottingham lace manufacturer. In 1916, Helena, Samuel's widow, opened the hall as a convalescent home for wounded officers. In 1986, the hall was recognised by Historical England as a Grade II listed building. There is no specific record of a church in the village in William the Conqueror's Doomsday Survey of 1086, but there is evidence of its existence in the 13th century. On the 16th of June 1487, Henry VII celebrated two masses in the church before the Battle of East Stoke, considering to be the bloodiest ever waged on English soil. In November 1792, the church and the spire fell into the church, causing immense damage. By 1817, the increasing population in the village made a larger church necessary. The nave, aisles and tower were rebuilt in the early English Gothic style. An unusual feature being the Saddleback Tower. The tower now contains a fine ring of eight bells. In 1897, as part of the celebrations of Queen Victoria's Diamond Jubilee, the Parish Council opened a playground for children of Wharf Lane, the present recreation ground. Hi guys, this is Andy, the Expedition Hiker. And uh, today we're on another shorter walk. As today we're doing about eight miles. And I've got my furry friend with me again, Barney. So as you can see by the sign behind me, we are in Radcliffe, and by the Radcliffe Football Club. And uh, today we're going to be walking again alongside the River Trent. Now last week we walked from Gedlin to Stoke Bardoff and then to Burton Joyce via the River Trent. Uh, this week we are walking the opposite side of the river in the opposite direction. Along the way we went past St Mary's Radcliffe. Now we actually started this one in Radcliffe. And today we're going to walk from Radcliffe on the Trenton Valley Way for a little while. From there we're going to head down to Home Pier Point and past Home Hall, past the National Water Sports Centre, the Canoe Course, and then we'll head along the River Trent to Trent Bridge next to West Bridgeford. So as I say, today is an eight miler and another training walk for Barney, a little bit further than last time. Let's see how he goes. So let's get going. So we've got Captain Snifflelock with us again. So somebody said in one of the comments last week that uh, I should do a tally of how many times he sniffs. The thing is, is there's more of a chance of um, a tally of how many times he doesn't sniff. Maybe we should train him up as a sniffer dog. Right, anyway, and we're going to head this way and then we're going to head onto the Trenton Valley Way. Ronnie's got something to look at. Horses. This is the first, he's not sniffing. Mind you, there's not much to sniff out around here. <laughs> He's a bit worried of that big horse by this right outside. That horse. Come on then. Okay, Bonnie's not too happy with about these. Come on. Then. Great. So I decided to film Barney walking in front of me down this little quiet track. And he decides he wants to walk behind me now. Here he comes, sniffing as usual. Heads down more than it's up. You ain't got a clue where he's walking half the time. And it is an older letterbox, as it says, VR, Victoria. Rather than the present ones, Elizabeth. So as we can see, this, this is Route 15, part of the National Cycle Network, as we head towards Home Pier Point. And it's actually also part of the Trent Valley Way, which, uh, as I mentioned before, I'm looking to do, hopefully for the next two or three months, 108 mile route would be coming from this direction, because we will start at Trent Lock and head to the River Humber, 
of the uh, Gainsborough. Now, that's been a building here since 1280. This building, it was actually built in 1500. And by the side, we have the Church of St. Edmund, which was built to service the Pierpoint family. And a lot of its members of the Pierpoint family are actually buried within the grounds. And the Pierpoint family is uh, Duke and Duchess of Kingston upon Hull. Now, there is a gardens are open, but they're open by ticket only. We haven't got a ticket. So we'll just have a look around the outside and then we'll head in. Uh, well, we'll head off. Quite a big structure, it goes back quite a bit. As you can see, there's a place that you will dismount from your horse and then go into the house itself, the hall. And as I said, we haven't got tickets. So we might be able to get a quick glimpse of it from here. So we can get view of the courtyard. Now I believe three families live within the property now, all ancestors to the Pierpoint family, now called the Brackenburys, one of which I think is Sir Edward Brackenbury. I think he's the, we call the lead of the family, oh, the Duke. And you can see not much has been done since the 1500s. So the property is looking as it did back in the 1500s. Now I'm not sure how far we're going to get here before somebody tells me we shouldn't be here. So the Pierpoint coat of arms, Pieriponti. William Sanday, who died 14th September 1799. Thomas Lowe, who was born 28th of November 1813 and uh, died July 27th, 1870. As I mentioned before, a lot of the Pierpoint family are buried within the grounds. Some you can see are a lot older than others, like this one in front, built in sandstone. A lot of it's been cut away now. So Francis Dort de la Borde of Merrillville and Chessy in the one flourishing kingdom of France, forced by faction from his own country. He, for many years, resided in this where we lived, beloved, and died, lamented. Uh, I'm not sure what year that would have been. So the area we've reached now is Skylark's Nature Reserve. So either side of me is uh, lagoons and ponds as we head down towards the main lakes. Oh, that's a pity. I just went past a couple, an elderly couple with uh, binoculars and they just spotted a kingfisher. And as I always say, that's the one bird I want to try and catch. Really a good picture on camera. But every time I do spot them, they fly off. I have my camera recording 24-7 an opportunity to do that. So we've just entered the National Water Sports Centre which is also a 
country park. So uh, I'm going to follow it through now. Now on our right hand side soon we should come to the main lake which is what the water sports centre was built for between 1970 and 1971. And in 1972 the first national rowing championships was held at Home Pier Point. So this is the National Water Sports Centre and the lake is actually 2,000 metres long. Just about to see down the bottom there's some yellow markers. That is the starting point if you do the full two kilometres. There's six lanes for rowing. Now obviously they use this for other water sports. I've done windsurfing on it years ago and some canoeing as well. And we're just about at the 1,000 metre point. And we also, and then they head down that direction. So if obviously if you've got a shorter race of a thousand meters, that's where you would start at this level with this white shed. And we're going to head this direction. Now, funny story, well, I'll call it funny story. Years ago, when Band-Aid and everything else feed the world and run the world, it was back in 1985, 1986, I think it was, maybe in a little bit earlier than that. Bob Geldof and Midyear and I would say there was somebody else but I can't remember who it was. So that set off a massive a pop concert and on top of that they did Run the World. John Denver started it. And every, it started at the same time all over the world. Everybody started running it at the same time. And they actually ran round the lake and a bit further. And it was six miles. So everybody ran six miles around the world. Problem being is that John Denver decided to turn up a little bit late. So we actually started 10 minutes after everybody. And actually, I was, when in, back in my running days, I was near the front in the first, what, three or 400 people. And it was actually about this point where we were running down here and the actual direction to run was to get, continue straight. But we had some dodgy marshal and he sent us that way. So the first like 500 runners ended up doing an extra half a mile so it wasn't the best organized event this is one of Barney's favorite things a fetish for feathers now well, sometimes I think he's a cat he chases birds and he likes chewing on feathers although he does like to chew on anything which does include artificial grass and stones and even screws recently screws and nails is uh well, a staple yesterday he tried to eat that we're having a little break here Barney's had a bit of chicken and water and we're going to head on to the end we're going to have a, a glimpse at the slalom course and then we'll head on alongside the river trent are you enjoying yourself barney no, I'm sniffing, like usual. I'm not called Captain Sniff a lot for no reason. I've got a sniff. Sniffy sniff. I also think he's a meerkat sometimes because he seems to stand on his back legs all the time. To me, he looks a bit like a meerkat, but yeah, hey, that's me. There's a race about to start. I presume this lady on the bike is a coach. We're all going to race at the same time. So there's two females and three... Oh, there's this guy in the blue boat is a canoe. Oh, they're all canoe. The other, two of them got them stabiliser boats. Pit them for open seats. All right, here they go. One in blue is winning, by a mile. Because... Uh, I spoke to the lady. These are all Paralympians. Now these are the reserves. At the moment, actually, the Paralympics is happening here at Tokyo. Well, unfortunately, didn't get to Tokyo. And uh, those boats with like a stabiliser on the side, a Polynesian type boat, uh, built for open water or the sea. 
uh, obviously give them people support, have some sort of lowered body disability. I did my canoe coaching qualification on this lake some 30 years ago. So I haven't really been in a canoe for the last 10 years though. <laughs> I don't think I'll be able to get in the Olympics. Anyway, Bonnie's getting a bit anxious. He wants to go walking again. So we've had, as I say, we've had so much to eat. We've had a drink. So let's get going. Well, we're next to water. Now Bonnie's oh, never seen him get in the water swimming before. And I think he's quite reluctant to do so. He's more interested in a feather, eating a feather than getting in the water. Look, he's jumping back because of the current. <laughs> I don't think we'll ever get him in the sea if he's scared of this current, the tide. If you ever do doggy paddle, is it a natural thing? <laughs> he's getting to the edge. Will he do something? No, he's scared stiff of it. He don't like water, does he? <laughs> now here's the challenge. He wants to get to them ducks, but he's scared of going in the water. I was going to head down to the Slon course and look at that. Well, it's a small world. I've just uh, bumped into an ex-student, Finn. I did know he used a canoe. I didn't know to what extreme. And that's why he's a coach down here now. Is at the University of Nottingham. I think he left. It's been two or three years ago now. So obviously he's gone on to better things and uh, canoeing for um, England and coaching as well. Top eight in under 23s. So well done to you. Anyway, uh, here's the River Trent. Quite wide at this point. The Slalom course feeds from the Trent and we are heading this way now. And we're going to continue following the river, I think. So small world. And it says there's a regatta down here next week on Saturday, so that will be the Saturday after this video comes out. Combat archery. Sounds interesting enough. So you have a bow and arrow and you're in this little area and you're shooting arrows at other people. What could possibly go wrong? I mean, two things. One, it's only on a small little playground area. Um, I'm sure there's stray arrows go. Another if you're combating, surely you're trying to hit somebody with an arrow. I mean, I'm sure King Harold didn't come out with that idea. So we've just reached one and three quarter mile. Now, I'm guessing that's till we get to the bridge, the Trent Bridge or Lady Bay Bridge. Sniffalot is sniffing as usual as we walk away from the sports centre and the cricket club as we head towards the sailing boats. That's somebody getting ready to go out. Now if I remember right, that is called a wayfarer. Done a bit of sailing as well. Not for a long time though. Well, these dot leaves will do you wonders if you get stung by a nettle. How big they are. About two, three feet high. So as we leave the water sports centre and the country park, we pass by these fields, which is a bit of a floodplain because the River Trent is renowned for flooding every year. And uh, this is by the side of Lady Bay. Now Lady Bay, 
which is over there, or the suburb of Nottingham, is got its name as in a bend in the river, the Lady Bay. And it also, uh, in 1941, a Luftwaffe plane flew over it, dropped a line of bombs all over Lady Bay. So a lot of it was demolished. Now there are quite a lot of Victorian houses in the Lady Bay area, but uh, a lot of the houses were built in 1950 after the Luftwaffe decided to flatten it. Now the pleasure boats that we can see across there, now, I do believe, well, yes, it's the princess. So there's the prince and the princess. Now, the one on the left, some years ago, sunk. Now, I'm not sure if that's actually the boat that sunk or another boat of the same name. It was a, I think it was a New Year's party. Uh, about, probably two miles away from where we are now, it's over down the river. It's a bit of a nice pad to have on the edge of the river. I don't know who lives in it, but I'm sure we've got a few pennies. Well, that's not the usual helicopters you see around here. It looks more like the type you see coming off an oil rig. So as we head towards this city and Trent Bridge, we can see Trent Bridge in front of us. The floodlights of Trent Bridge Cricket Ground. So once we get to Trent Bridge, we can cross over the bridge and then walk along the canal, which is a walk I did really back Christmas time, I think. I did the big track. So if you fancy watching the big track when there was snow on the ground, oh, I'll leave a link to here. So as we continue alongside the river, on our left hand side is a football training ground, Notts County Training Centre. So Notts County Football Club is their training centre, so where they practice training. <laughs> so this is the Bay Rugby Club. Uh, the actual, well you can see the stands at the top, that's Nottingham Rugby Club play there. They used to play at Meadow Lane. And then I'm guessing the lease ran out and then they came here. Now I do believe if they do get to the Premiership then this ground won't be suitable and then they will go back to Notts County in Meadow Lane. But as I mentioned also Nottingham Corsairs play here. My son used to play for the team here, Nottingham Corsairs. And in there North won every match they actually played for three or four seasons. It was basically the up to 16 year olds, it was like the best team for the county. So, another of Nottingham's past rally, rally bicycles. What's on that blue lorry container? And obviously, rally's gone now. It used to be a big business in Nottingham. Rally bicycles were built in Nottingham. Uh, there's actually the Nottingham University have a campus that's actually on the site of uh, what was Rally Park. And I do think that actually bicycles are actually made in India now. So, as we see more development more flats being built on our left hand side you can see a certain football ground now a certain football ground that uh, I know one youtuber that uh, follows me knows so well Anthony Johnson I do believe he's a Forest fan for his sins and across the river we've got the other ground Notts County, which is Notts County Football Club. Uh, they play at Meadow Lane, and that is the actual oldest league club in the world. I think it was 1868 they were established. Well, Juventus and their kit, black and white stripes, took their idea of their kit from the Notts County Football Club. 
So at the Trent end of the city ground, and actually as you can see, we go underneath the actual stand as we reach Trent Bridge. So we're just across the bridge and now we're on the big track. As I've walked before, I looked at purchasing one of these flats in front when I left the army. And it didn't look like that. They've been done up since. It was actually the top floor, right about the middle. But uh, the balconies were only about two foot off the ground. So they weren't very safe. So this is Meadow Lock number seven. Meadow Lane Lock number seven. All right guys, we are ending this walk. We're near the city of Nottingham. As you can hear quite a bit of noise on my right hand side uh, it is rush hour people are going home now, i think bonnie's enjoyed it he's still walking in front i do believe he wants a drink now because uh, he keeps looking at the canal water we're going to stop here we'll have a drink i and him so we shall sign off for today so i shall say bye bye from me and well, I'm sure if Barney wasn't sniffing so much, he would say bye to you as well. Until next time, I'll see you soon. So, bye-bye, hikers.